When a big corporation starts drilling for oil in the frozen north, they don't know who they might be disturbing. Oh, no, they're starting a dynamite again. The North Pole's leading citizen needs the blasting to stop right away or... No more jingle bells! And he's ready to do something about it. Something magical. Welcome to North Pole City. Jacqueline Smith is a mom appointed to save Santa's workshop in the night they saved Christmas. I know I'm leaving this whole matter in very good hands. Mason Adams is the greedy executive who refuses to stop the drilling. June Lockhart plays Mrs. Claus. Santa's chief elf is portrayed by Paul Williams. And Art Carney stars as old Kris Kringle himself. It's a heartwarming story for the entire family. The Night They Saved Christmas. Now on home video from Cabin Fever Entertainment. Merry Christmas! What time is it? Oh, honey, you don't want to know. plays his music much too loudly. Morning. Hi, kiddo. Hey, Dad. I'll just Guess what I'm doing today? today? What? A field trip to the planetarium. Oh, oh, stars and stuff. Great. I love studying that stuff when I was a kid. Yes, this is Warren. I know. I know it's a problem. Yes, uh, I have a feeling 309 is acting up again. Well, I'll, I'll talk to him again. I'll do what I can. Yes. Goodbye. Don't tell me you're tired of being apartment manager. No, I love dealing with the crazy neighbors. I have some great news for you. It's going to be a great Christmas season at the store, and we'll be out of this place by the beginning of next year. Did I already tell you that? That's what you told me last year when I wanted to move. I know that, but this time I'm absolutely sure of it. Hey, guys, where did you put my laptop? Oh, never mind. I got it right here. What? 
Elderly lady with large home in the avenue, six. Live in couple? No way, Carrie. Live in couple for meal preparation, light housekeeping, and yard care. This is the answer to our prayers. That sounds like a nightmare, living in a house with some old lady. It's in the avenues. Look, it says we'd have our own private, fully furnished quarters. <laughs> yeah, who knows what that means? Well, let's go find out. Meet the woman. This is absolutely the worst time of year to make a move. Oh, no time is a good time for you. Besides, I do all the packing. Moving would take part of an afternoon tops. Uh -oh. Richard, you spend all of your time at the store. I'm here every day, all day. You have no idea how depressing it can be. OK, forget about me. It's Jenna I'm most concerned about. This place is too small. It cramps her spirit. OK, I'll think about it. I promise. I was hoping you'd say that, because we have an appointment at noon. What? Is that the one? That's 150 Grand Avenue. We're looking for 141. I like all these houses. That's it. <sighs> this place is gorgeous. This place is like a prison. You must be the Evans family. Uh, yes, I'm Richard Evans. This is my wife, Carrie. Uh -huh. It's our daughter, Jenna. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Stephen Hoover. I'm Mrs. Parkins' lawyer. Please, come in. Mrs. Parkins never had live-in help, but she's in her 70s now, and to be frank with you, I think she's more self-sufficient than she really is. I see. I worked for Mr. Parkin for many years. Since his death 14 years ago, I've continued to give Mrs. Parkin advice, legal and otherwise. It took a while, but I convinced her this was in her best interest. So it wasn't Mrs. Parkin's idea to have somebody come live with her? Not altogether. Tell me, how did Mr. Parkin make his fortune? Hard work. Mrs. Parkin, the Evanses are here. Please sit down. Thank you. Would you care for some peppermint tea? Yes, thank you. None for me, thanks. I don't care for tea. Mr. Evans, do you have any idea how many species of tea there are? No. I'm afraid I'm not up on that. 600, placed in about 30 genera. Interesting. Thank you. Are you from this area? We moved here from Seattle two years ago. We immediately fell in love with it. It's such a wonderful place to raise a family. This is your only child? Yes. I'm in kindergarten. Before we begin the interview, I would like to discuss the nature of the arrangement. As the ad stated, I need someone to prepare meals. I don't eat breakfast, but I would expect brunch to be served at 11 o'clock and dinner at 6 o'clock. My laundry is done twice a week on Tuesday and Friday, and the bedding changed at least once a week. As for the outdoors, Mr. Evans, Yes, ma'am. You will need to take care of the leaves in the autumn, and all the pathways must be kept clear in the winter. All other household maintenance I hire out. That's doable. In exchange for this service, you would have the entire South Wing. Is this overall arrangement agreeable with you? Yes, absolutely. Very well. Now. I would like to ask you some very important questions. Do either of you smoke? No. Good. I don't permit smoking in the house. 
Also, I do not permit loud music. Well, I left all that behind in college. But uh, Jenna here, now, she plays those Mother Goose records so loud that the neighbors have to call the cops. <laughs> Dad! Well, God, kids will be kids. Do you have any children, Mrs. Parkin? No, I do not. I was just kidding. We're really very quiet, aren't we, honey? Yes. Are you currently employed, Mr. Evans? No. I'm an employer. I have my own business. It's called the Ski Company. Maybe you've heard of it. No, I haven't. Have you ever skied? Mrs. Parkin is the one asking the questions, Richard. That's quite all right. I have never skied, Mr. Evans. The thought of flying down a mountainside on two narrow pieces of wood has never appealed to me. Sorry. Do you have any references? Yes. I am the apartment manager for our building. It allows me to stay home and spend more time with our daughter. But we're ready for a change, aren't we, Richard? Yes, very much so. As I have told all of my applicants, there will be a trial period of one month. Thank you all for coming. I really like this house. Yes, Mrs. Parkin, I was an architectural history major in college, and this home, it's truly beautiful. I will let you know as soon as possible. Oh, am I glad to get out of there. Oh, that was a disaster, wasn't it? Thanks to you. What do you mean, thanks to me? I can't believe you said that about me, Dad. I was joking. Why do you always have to do jokes, Richard? Oh, come on, Carrie. It's a beautiful house. But, I mean, why on earth would you want to live with that woman? She has no sense of humor. There's no way she could relate to Jenna. She's never had kids herself. Well, I can tell you this. I know people, and she's not as tough as she seems. Well, I know people, too, and she needs to strap on two narrow pieces of wood and fly down the side of a mountain. Something, anything. Don't worry, Mom. We'll find another place to move. Richard, you gotta hear this. An unseasonably early Canadian cold front continues to move eastward over the northern part of the country. The front could trigger snowstorms and higher elevations throughout the Rocky Mountain states. All right. I'm telling you, partner, this winter is going to be gangbusters for us. Yeah, well, if it's not, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble, because I promised my wife this morning we were going to turn the corner at Christmas. Well, and we're going to! Well, we better. For one thing, it's the only way I'm going to get out of going any more of these interviews. Oh, yeah, how'd it go? Well, the old lady did not like me at all. And come to think of it, she wasn't too charming either. Excellent. Your apartment may be small, but it's still your castle. Yeah. The last thing a man wants to do is live in someone else's castle. That's right. Dad! <laughs> what are you doing up so late? We're celebrating. What are we celebrating? We're moving into the parking house, Dad. You gotta be kidding. I guess we stood out from all the other applicants. <laughs> Thanks for going along with this. It's a crossroads for us. I can feel it. At least it's a big castle. You need to tell me this woman lives here all by herself? Not anymore. Take off our shoes. <laughs> Where are we going with this thing anyway? Uh, the attic. Good thing you don't own a piano. <laughs> Carrie? Yes, Mrs. Parkin. After you settled in today, we'll need to discuss brunch and dinner menus. Yes, ma'am. You never discussed the brunch and dinner menus with me. Thanks so much, George. Okay, Thanks, buddy. okay. Just don't ask me again. <laughs> I've done my good deed for the year. <sighs> now, I leave you with Brunhilde. <laughs> oh, here. 
And him. Oh, thank you. See you guys. Bye. See you tomorrow. Thanks. Okay, let's finish up. See, that didn't take so long. <sighs> Come on. Oh, what have you got in here? <laughs> What's up here? Where are we going? Unbelievable. This attic is as big as most people's houses. Well, for better or worse, we're here. It's dusty up here. Look at all this stuff. Hey, Dad, look. What? What is this? <gasps> look at this. This is exquisite. Look, it's a Christmas box. There's a wind-up key on the bottom. Must be a music box. Play it, Mom. I can't. It's locked. I'm hungry. How about takeout? You have no romance. Know that? I have a lot of romance. Let's get pizza. Chinese. Pizza. Chinese. Pizza. Chinese. Pizza. Chinese. 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 Pizza. 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 This is such a great place. You'll get used to it. Before long, all this will be music to your ears. Yeah? What kind of music is that? Classical. That's what this house is like to me. A piece of beautiful classical music. Fine, thank you. Good. Mrs. Parkin, I noticed some beautiful Italian china in the kitchen cupboard. I was wondering, would it be all right if I used it sometime? For you, not us. <laughs> I prefer this china. Is this beef bouillon and mushroom? Yes, ma'am. Is that all right? Well, this is a cream soup spoon, and I will need a clear soup spoon. Oh, I'm sorry. I've never used formal silverware, but I would love to learn about it if you wouldn't mind teaching me. Very well. Well, there's no doubt that uh, for a beginner, that's the right brand. But I'll tell you, sir, if your son's friends are going to be hitting the slopes, chances are they're going to be on these snowboards here, and he's going to want one of those. Richard. Phone call for you. Excuse me just a moment. George, would you take care of that gentleman for me? Thank sure. you. So, we're looking at snowboards. Hello? Well, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. How are you? Well, fine. It's good to hear from you. What can I do for you? Really? Well, you bet I will. I will. Of course, I'll, I'll check my schedule. And as soon as I uh, can nail down a date, I'll call you. Well, this is great. Thanks for calling. Bye. Who, who was it? The, oh, that was just our uh, man in Park City. Yeah, so what did he want? No, oh, nothing. He just wants to know how soon I could get there to meet his partners. Yes! <laughs> Back to work. Where do you think she goes, Mom? I have no idea. Is it a secret? <laughs> I don't think so, Jenna. Come on. Let's try a new tutu. There we go. Oh, it's perfect. Is Dad coming home for dinner tonight? Not tonight. Why? Let's see. Tonight he has inventory. What's inventory? 
Inventory is where your father tries to figure out if he has enough merchandise for the season. I don't like inventory. I'd, um, I'd love to stay and chat, but it is getting a little bit late, and, of course, you know, work begins early tomorrow. Mr. Evans, you entered by the North Gate when you came home tonight. The North Gate? Yes, I did. I would prefer you to use the East Gate. The North Gate is directly under my bedroom, and I'm a light sleeper. Oh, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you. East Gate, no problem. And please, park your vehicle by the garage. I noticed that you left it by the front door. Park by the garage, use the east gate. Anything else? Will you be coming home this late every evening? Well, more than likely, yes, I will. We're getting towards the busy season. I hope that isn't a problem. I hope it isn't either. Honey, do you remember that investor I've been talking to? The one who's thinking about putting up money for a second store? Yeah. Well, he called me today. He wants me to get up to Park City as soon as I can to discuss the details. There, let's see what kind of a noise you make tonight. You know how I feel about that second store idea, Richard. Honey, I know, but you got to trust me on this. This is a tremendous opportunity. And this guy's talking about fully funding the operation. George and I wouldn't have to put up a cent. All he wants is our expertise. And time, no doubt. We hardly see you now as it is. You only have dinner with us once a week, with a second store more than two hours away. I'm sure we can kiss that goodbye. You don't understand. An offer like this doesn't come along every day. I don't think you understand how much Jenna misses you, or how much I miss you, for that matter. Carrie, that first store, it's just a way to make a living. But the second store, that's what's going to get us where we want to be. Where is that? Here, the avenues. We are here. No, we're not. We're guests. That's not good enough. I love you and Jenna so much. I want you to have everything. Richard, I already have everything I want. Mrs. Parkin. Good morning. I've been using the East Gate, Mrs. Parkin. Uh, Richard. I love it when the leaves start to turn, don't you? Uh huh. Oh, by the way, do you know the Latin for maple? <sighs> no, I don't. Acker. Acker rubrum, the red maple. Acker saccharum, the sugar maple. Just to name two. They really are quite beautiful this time of year. So instead of saying, would you please rake the leaves, she says, do you know the Latin for maple? That's just her way. It's a very strange way, if you ask me. I got to tell you, she's giving me the willies. Every time I turn around, I'm running into her. What's that? Mary rings the bell if she needs something. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. 
So, how's our new landlady treating you? She never talks to me. She just reads her Bible. Other books, too. How do you know? Because I see her. And you know what? Sometimes she gets in a taxi and is gone for hours. And she takes her umbrella whether it's raining or not. I hope you're writing all this down. Would you care for some dessert, Mrs. Parkin? Uh, no, thank you. I, I'll just have my tea. Yes, ma'am. I like this setup. The lady of the manor on that side, the servants on this side. Mary is a lonely woman who, from what I can tell, doesn't have anybody in her life. I don't mind putting up with her idiosyncrasies. She certainly has a few, that's for sure. It's sad, actually. Nobody ever calls, nobody ever visits. I can't imagine why. And I've noticed another thing. There are no pictures in the house, no family photos, nothing. It's as though she doesn't have a past. Mom says Mary just needs friends, and we're it. Lucky us. Sorry. Not tonight, honey. Please. Nope, it's already past your bedtime. Just a short one. No, come on. Under the covers. Please. Let's go. Nope, nope, please, nope. Please. Oh. Okay, Jenna. All right, all right. Just one. Just one, that's all. Okay, scoot over. Let's go. Okay, the million dollar bear. Richard, George is on the phone. Oh, I'll be right there. Honey, I'll be right back. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. We gotta have that shipment by the 20th. Wait, well, no, wait, wait a minute. Give me his number. I'll talk to him and I'll call you right back, okay? What is it? So you keep having the same dream night after night? Yeah, this is your kind of stuff, isn't it? I think it's really interesting. Actually, I'm jealous. I've never had a recurring dream. I'll tell you what, you can have mine. So does the angel say anything to you other than Richard? No, she's just waving. Waving? Yeah, you know, beckoning. Beckoning? Oh, that's good. <laughs> I hate to spoil your fun, Carrie, but it is just a dream. You haven't given this enough time. I've given it long enough to know that I prefer living alone. Maybe it's this particular family that's the problem. Oh, the family's nice enough. 
Although the husband is a bit of a, an odd duck. Mary, you need someone here with you. If you're not feeling well, someone's here. If you need something in the middle of the night, someone's here. Of course, there is an alternative. Don't even bring it up. I'm not sure why you want to stay in such a large house. Because it is my home. There are some very fine retirement facilities. I don't like old ladies and bingo. Then my suggestion is you try to make this arrangement work as well as possible. You owe the Evans family 30 days. At that point, if they're not working out, we can try someone else. Thanks for coming in. Thanks. George, I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, buddy, you look terrible. Thanks a lot. What are you, sick or something? No, it's that stupid house. What, what happened? What, they discover bodies in the basement? The whole place is weird. The old lady is weird. The whole thing is making me weird. So, move. George, have you ever had a recurring dream? Yeah. Karen Estock. Business 201. I'm serious. What, what, are you having dreams now? I know this sounds silly, but I've never had dreams like this. They're so real. I'm waking up with a cold sweat. What are they about? Now you're going to laugh at me. No, 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 I won't laugh. It's the same thing every night. An angel is beckoning to me. Oh, partner, that place really is there, do you? I never should have let Carrie talk me into moving there in the first place. Yeah, but you did. Yeah, and it's not working out, and we're getting out of there, and the sooner the better. You're serious, aren't you? You really want to leave. Yes, I do. I hate to break it to you, but we can't. Why not? I have an obligation to Mrs. Parkin. Obligation? What obligation? It's my job. I'm sure that's something you can understand. Well, yes, it is. And I'll tell you what, your job is affecting my job. Oh, are you saying your work is more important than mine? No, I'm not saying that. I simply would like us to move to a place that we all feel good about. Well, I'm sorry, Richard. The only way we're going to move is if Mrs. Parkin kicks us out. to spy on people, child. I'm not spying. I'm just waiting for my dad. It's drafty downstairs here in the hall. You should wait upstairs. I like it here. What makes you think Jenna did it? Obviously, your wife would have told me if it had happened while she was cleaning. 
I don't have a cat. It is the only possible explanation, isn't it? What about a ghost? <laughs> I'm just kidding, Mrs. Parkin. I'll, I'll speak to Jenna. I would appreciate that. Thank you. I still don't understand why she didn't come to me about this. I'm the one who's here all day. Well, she's old-fashioned. The man's the head of the household. Carrie? I know this isn't really a good time, but I gotta go to Park City tomorrow. You're kind of letting me know about this at the last minute. Well, I told aren't you I was you? gonna have to go, but it's just for one night. I'll be back on Friday. Go, go, go if you have to go. It's really important. Just don't forget Jenna has a dance recital Friday evening. I haven't forgotten. I'll be back for that, I promise. Mrs. Parkin, are you busy? I mean, do you have a moment? Yes. I just wanted to tell you how sorry I am about the broken vase. And of course, how sorry Jenna is. This is a little something for you. Jenna worked very hard on it. She knows how much you love books. She would have liked to have given it to you herself, but I'm sure you understand she's a little afraid because of, you know. The broken vase. Yes, exactly. Anyway, she hopes you enjoy it. Once upon a time, there was a nice old lady who lived in a red house. And she had some very pretty things until a little five-year-old girl came to live with her. But the little girl really wanted the lady to like her. Everything's fine, thank you. I've come to see Jenna. It will only take a minute. Please, come in. Hello, Jenna. I came to thank you for your very thoughtful gift. you'd read it to me sometime. You'll think about it, won't you? In the meantime, I'd like to invite you and your mother to tea this afternoon. <sighs> Jenna, it's all right. The truth is, I never liked that vase anyway. Hideous old thing. What about that tea? We accept. Thank you. 
Anybody in here? Terry? Jenna? Come on, you two better not be goofing on me. My beloved one, how cold the Christmas snows seem this year without you. Even the warmth of the fire does little but remind me of how I wish you were here with me. I love you. How I love you. Be back this afternoon. Well, one meeting turned into a whole bunch of meetings. It's okay, Mary came. Really? We made up. We had tea with her and everything. You missed a wonderful evening. We're gonna go get some hot chocolate. We can have marshmallows too. Yeah. You can join us if you like. sleep. What's wrong? If it's about last night, I'm sorry I gave you the cold chill. There's nothing to do with that. Carrie, there was something very strange that happened here last night before you got back. What? Do you remember that music box you found in the attic? Sure. Well, I heard it. You mean it still works? You could say that. I was downstairs looking for you before you got home. And I heard music playing, and I followed it up to the attic, and it was coming from that box. And as soon as I got up to the box, the music stopped. Did you move it? No. Well, somebody must have moved it. But the strangest thing about it is that the music that's coming from the Christmas box and the music in my dreams is the same. Now, I know, I know that, that makes me sound like I'm crazy, but either I am going crazy, or there's something very weird going on in this house. Maybe you shouldn't think of it as weird. Well, that's easy for you to say. You're not the one who's been having the dreams and hearing music. Richard, what if all of this isn't a coincidence? Hey, what do you mean by that? Well, what if we were meant to come to this house? I know you don't want to hear that. I know you'd like to get as far away from here as you could. You got that right. But think about it. Maybe there's a reason we're here. This is for you. Thank you. A new bear. Well, actually, he's a very old bear. Where'd you get him? Jenna, you never ask anybody where your present came from. I'm going to name him Henry. Perhaps you'd like to bring your new friend down to the den. It's warmer down there. I want to stay here. 
Well, we could finish that book we started. I have a better idea. Perhaps your father could read it to you when he comes home. Mary. Yes? Did you know my dad's going to teach me how to ski? Oh, is that so? Yep, he promised. Well, then I'm sure he will. He's promised things before, and they didn't happen. Jenna, you must understand that starting a new business needs a lot of hard work and a lot of time. Is work better than here? No. No place is better than home. Then why does he want to be there instead of here? I suppose sometimes we forget. You let me know if you need anything, won't you? What is it, Mrs. Parkin? There's a bit of a chill this evening. Would you start a fire for me? Certainly. Richard, do you know who the Greek god of fire was? No, but uh, I have a feeling you're going to tell me. Hephaestus, son of Zeus and Hera. There. Will that be all right? Yes, thank you. Richard, uh, by the way, Jenna and I started a book, but we were interrupted. I told her that I was sure you'd be happy to finish it when you got home. I wish Mrs. Parkin had considered that I might have something to do before she volunteered me. What? I didn't say anything. I'm sure your mom would be happy to read the book to you. Richard. Morning. I have an appointment in town. I believe it's on your way to work. Oh, uh, maybe Carrie could drop you off. No, I've given her the day off. She's been working too hard lately. Edgewood Plaza. Do you know it? Mrs. Parkin, I've lived in this town over two years. I think I know where Edgewood Plaza is. 
Very good. Shall we? all of my life. When I was young, these decorations went up a couple of weeks before Christmas. Then they started putting them up just after Thanksgiving, and now we don't even get to enjoy Thanksgiving. They're so busy selling Christmas. You can pull over here. Richard, do you know what the first gift of Christmas was? A tie? <laughs> you mean you're not going to tell me? Maybe you should give it some thought. The door. Mrs. Parkin, I want you to know, I am, I'm pleased as punch that you've become close to my wife and daughter, but we gotta come clean here. What is it that you don't like about me? I don't dislike you, Richard. Quite the contrary. I think you have a lot of potential. <sighs> well, then what exactly is it that you want from me? A ride home. What? Be here at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock? I can't... I'm not your chauffeur. And we stopped at the church on the way home. And then she wanted to go to the grocery store and then the pharmacy. That's when I put my foot down. I mean, what is it with this woman? She knows I've got a business to run. I think she just does it because she knows it gets on my nerves. Richard, you're overreacting. I'm not overreacting. It was really annoying. She kept talking about how store owners are greedy and she asked me another one of her weird questions. So she's always doing that. What was the question? What was the first gift of Christmas? told her a tie. <laughs> See, it's funny. I thought it was funny, too. Did she think it was funny? Oh, no. She said I should give it some thought. I think she's just trying to connect with you. Oh, really? Well, if she is, I got news. It ain't working. Richard? I'd really like to ask Mary to have Thanksgiving dinner with us. What? No, no, we, uh, we can't. We're already set to have dinner with George and his family. They won't miss us. They have a large family to share Thanksgiving with. Mary only has us. Mary. This is an excellent dinner, Carrie. Thank you. Yes, it's terrific. So, Mrs. Parkin, uh, how many years have you lived in this house? Well, let's see. Almost 50 years. Wow. Thank you. <clears throat> we used to live in a nice little house back in Seattle before we moved here. Why did you move? Richard had an opportunity to start a business with his old college roommate, so we sold our house and moved here and <laughs> started a new life. And has it been worth it? Absolutely. What about your husband? Didn't he have his own business? Yes, he did. Well, looks like it was worth it. He traveled quite a bit. When are we going to get a Christmas tree? This dinner conversation is boring you, isn't it? Oh, Jenna. I think Jenna is right. It's time to start thinking about a Christmas tree. What do you say we go next Wednesday at 3 o'clock? How will that be for you, Richard? 
Well, I'll have to check my schedule. I don't know what you're so upset about. I put in a full day's work and made it home in time for dinner. Barely. Well, I made polite dinner conversation. That's right. It was polite. That's all it was. Well, I'm sorry. I wasn't more lively. You know what I think the problem is here? I think you're disappointed because we weren't some big happy family. Was out it there. so wrong to want that? No, but it might never happen. Mrs. Park and I do not. Mary is not the problem. You are. All you're concerned about is your business, Richard. You couldn't even take off Thanksgiving. Well, I'm glad I didn't because we had a lot of customers today. It seems to me you can't wait to start up the second store, make a lot of money, and move out of here as soon as possible. Then Mary will be by herself again. Why am I being criticized for working so hard? I have knocked myself out to get this business off the ground, and I succeeded. Now, where I come from, that's something to be applauded, not put down. I have supported you 100% for the past two years, and you know it. But I have to tell you something. You've changed lately. You really have. Even when you're here, you're not here half the time. Sometimes I think you'd rather be at the store than with us. That's ridiculous. Is it? I've seen how you are, you and George. You're such a tight team, no one else can get on it. You love it at that place. You love it so much, you want another one. Okay, would you be happier if I were miserable? Because I'll go back and work for somebody else That's again. That's not fair. You know I'd never want that. Then what am I supposed to do? You tell me. I'm confused. So am I, because I do know I don't want to spend the rest of my life with an absentee husband and father. Do you hear that? Mm. Carrie, do you hear that music? Sure. Honey, tell me you don't hear that. I hear what? The music. What music? My beloved one, another Christmas season has come, the time of joy and peace. Yet how great a void still remains in my heart. They say that time heals all wounds, but even as wounds heal, they leave scars, token reminders of the pain. Remember me, my love. Richard, it's 3 a.m. What on earth are you doing? I can't believe you were reading Mary's personal letters. I didn't go up to the attic in order to read her letters. And the letters aren't the issue here. What's important is that I'm hearing music and you're not. Mom? Oh, did we wake you, honey? I woke up because Just one I... second, Jenna. It's the end of the line for me, Carrie. We got to get out of here. This house is definitely not good for me. Dad! Well, honey, we're in the middle of something here. Since we moved here, I haven't had a decent night's sleep. I feel like I'm sleepwalking all the time. Mom! What, baby? I just had a dream about an angel. You must have told her about your dream, and, and that's why she dreamt it. You and Carrie are the only people who knew about that dream until last night. So, so the dream that Jenna described... It's exactly the same dream I've been having, night after night. I gotta tell you, buddy, that is out there. I'm kidding. This is something that can't just be explained away. So, what are you gonna do? 
I don't know. I was wondering, do you have any books on angels? Oh, let me think. Where are they? I just started here. It's okay, I'll find them. No, hang on just a second. Janet! Angel books! Religion, aisle 15. I heard it. Thank you. Heavenly spirits with wings, which signify travel between heaven and earth. From the Greek, angelos, messenger. Okay, all right, let's pretend, and I'm not saying I believe this, but just for the heck of it, let's say there is some reason that I'm having these dreams. What could it possibly be? And what about that Christmas box? And what about those letters? I can't decide if she wrote them or, or if they were written to her. I don't think you should read any more of those letters. Well, I don't intend to, but you want to know what I think? I think that they were either written to a lover or by a lover. Richard, really, this feels too private. Listen, listen. There are no pictures of her and her husband anywhere in the house. That suggests they didn't have the best relationship. And what about you? You're always wondering why she never had kids. She's so great with Jenna. Maybe she couldn't have kids. Maybe her husband didn't want to have kids. That would be enough right there to drive a wedge between them. See, this all makes sense. Unrequited love, her inability to come to terms with something really important. What do you think? Mom! I know you'll work it out. Good morning, Richard. Hello, Mrs. Parkin. How was your walk this morning? Well, I'm a little tired today, so I decided to come back early. Oh, by the way, we'll see you at 3 o'clock this afternoon. 3 o'clock? Yes. We're going to get a Christmas tree, remember? <sighs> I'm sorry. I'll have to pass. But you promised your daughter. No, I never promised her. I said I'd check my schedule. Well, perhaps 4 o'clock would be better. That would give you more time to do whatever it is you do. Mrs. Parkin. I promised Jenna that I would go. And I am going. Four o'clock it is. Wonderful. She's so sneaky, you know. I don't appreciate that, the way she puts me on the spot. Well, I never could have gotten you to take off work to come here. Besides, I've really grown to love her, and she's become like a grandma to Jenna. Well, she does have a style of her own. I'll hand her that. I know, Richard, I'm concerned about her. She hasn't been feeling well lately. She's in her 70s. You know, you can't exactly expect her to be full of pep all the time. I know. She did go out yesterday, same as usual, every Tuesday, rain or shine. I offered to drive her, but she didn't want me to. Do you have any idea where she goes? I don't know, but I don't dare ask. Mary's given me a few glimpses into her past, but most of it's a closed book. Mm. Dad! What? I found the best, absolutely best Christmas tree. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you did. I want this one. Oh. Oh, no, that's terrible. No, it isn't. Well, sure it is. Look at the top of it. You'd never get a, a star to sit on the top of that thing. I like it anyway. And I like it, too. Well, Carrie, help me out here. It's growing on me. Thanks a lot. <laughs> you know, Richard, with your help, it will be beautiful. Hey! <laughs> oh, wait, Jenna, there's a place right there for one. Oh, yeah! <gasps> oh, look. Here we go. Looks great. 
I still think you're all crazy. Oh, it looks wonderful. Let's turn on the lights. Okay. <gasps> oh, it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Isn't it? Oh, oh, it's we've never, ever had a tree so big. I know. We've only Jenna, had trees like it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like this one. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Use a little help I'll here. Be there, I'll be there, Carrie. I don't see what the big deal is. She's never done this before. She's gone out all the time. That's every Tuesday. This is Thursday, and she's been gone longer than she ever has. I've looked everywhere for her. Oh, okay, so tell me, what is it you want me to do? Carrie's been worried about you. She had no idea what happened to you. If you let me get the car, I'd be happy to give you a ride home. I'd like to sit a moment, if you don't mind. You okay? Oh, fine, thank you. And you? Well, I had to go all over town looking for you. Oh, I'm sorry if I troubled you. Mrs. Parkin, mm -hmm. uh, I can't help but wonder, of all the people who applied for this position, how come you picked us? You and I aren't exactly birds of a feather. You remind me of my husband. Excuse me for asking, but is that good or bad? Depends upon which year we're talking about. A portrait in your attic, is that him? That was a bad year. I never liked that portrait. It always struck me as being so... so pompous. It does make him look like a stuffed shirt. He wasn't always like that. When David and I were first married, we were like any other young couple, full of plans and excitement for the future. But unfortunately, people can change. David did. He started to travel more and more, made lots of money. And the more success he had, the more he wanted. Richard. Have you given any further thought to my question, the first gift of Christmas? I'm working on it. It is not a trivial question. I'll give it some more thought. I promise. Hi, honey. Oh, well, that was an interesting afternoon. I'll tell you one thing it accomplished. Now we know where she goes all the time. She and her husband may not have had the best relationship in the world, but she must have loved him. She visits his grave every week. I'm surprised I never saw her there, though. I pass that cemetery every day on my way to work. Richard. Mary's really not well. What do you mean? She asked me to take her to her doctor after you brought her home. What's wrong? It's her heart. She's been on medication for years, but the latest tests show the medication won't be much help anymore. What's she gonna do? Apparently, at Mary's age, there's nothing else they can do. Her doctor said her heart's just giving out. Oh, Carrie, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
I don't know how I'm going to tell Jenna. Now, don't start feeling sorry for me. I just want you to know if there's anything we can do. I take comfort in knowing that Carrie and Jenna are here. Good night, Mrs. Parkin. Good night, Richard. It starts running Tuesday. Ski boots are in, but uh, Richard, we have got to order more snowboards pronto. Those things are flying out of here. I think we're down to about a dozen or so. Even the purists are starting to convert. Can you take care of that order? Hello? Richard? Huh? What? You didn't hear a word I said, did you? I just missed the first part. Snowboards. Yeah, right. OK. Mary's getting worse, isn't she? She's been eating up in her room most of the week. You know, I, I can't help but think that it's more than the illness that's keeping her up there. I just feel so helpless. There's nothing I can do. I just, I just feel guilty. All those nasty things I said about her. No, no. No, I'm serious. Whatever it is she wants from me, I just, I can't seem to give it to her. Parkin, do you mind if I come in? Not at all. Uh, I've been given some thought to your question. The first gift of Christmas. I know what it was. It was love. The first gift of Christmas was love. That's a beginning, Richard. Mrs. Parkin, why is it so important to you that I get this thing? Mm. 
unfinished business, I suppose. It's so cold today, Mary. I've made us a nice pot of vegetable stew. Mary? <gasps> Mary! Yes, that would be on the third floor. Absolutely. Room 400. Second door on the left. Thank you. at the hospital with mom. Because it's time for you to come home. Is Mary going to be home for Christmas? Uh, no, honey. Mary's very sick. Is she going to die? Yes. Jenna, I'm afraid she is. I want to give Mary her Christmas present, darling. I think that's a nice idea. I've never seen one. Not a real one, anyway. Does that mean anything you don't see isn't real? No. Well, that's what faith is. What? Well, faith. It, believing in something that you can't really see. Like angels? Yeah. Like angels. You look exhausted. It was a long night. The doctors are keeping her as comfortable as they can. She's been sleeping off and on. Wishing you don't have to stay. Oh, no, I want to. I just have to go for a little while, but please call me if there's any change, okay? Of course. Something, Mary. It's your Christmas present. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you, Jenna. And you too, my dear, for your friendship. It has meant so much to me.
Hey, pal. I know you don't feel like celebrating, but once you close it down, come out, say hello to some of the people. I gotta go back to the hospital after I finish here. George? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Do you remember the last time we went skiing? Skiing? Yeah, skiing. You know, that thing that we used to love to do a long time ago. We just haven't had the time, that's all. It's strange, isn't it? I mean, here we are, surrounded by ski equipment, and we don't even have time to do the thing that got us into this business in the first place. I'd love to discuss the subtle ironies of the situation further, but do you remember we decided that once this store turned the corner, we were going to hire an assistant manager? You know, kick back, spend a little more time with the family? Whatever happened to that idea? The idea's still there. It just got postponed, that's all. Yeah, well, I don't want to postpone it. What do you mean? George, I don't want to do the second store. I don't want to postpone my family anymore. Richard, uh, I know you've been under a lot of stress lately, and I'm really sorry about Mrs. Parkin. Why don't we just put all this aside for now? We'll talk about the second store after the holidays. George, what do you think the first gift of Christmas was? A tie. There's the smile I know and love. Come on.
my dear Andrea, how I wish that I might say these things to your gentle face. I know this cannot be for now, and this causes me such pain. Having to give you up has made me finally understand how limitless the love of God truly is, that he could give his only son. As my faith has grown, so has my hope, hope that one day I will hold you in my arms again. Until then, I love you, my little angel. Mother. Mr. Hoover. Carrie. Mrs. Parkin had a daughter. Andrea. She was only five years old when she died, the same age as Jenna. She wrote the letters to Andrea. She's been living with this grief for all these years. Honey, the doctor said she doesn't have much longer. Mary. Mary. I'm so sorry. I wish you'd told us about Andrea. I understand now, Mary. The first gift of Christmas. It was a child. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Good care of your family, Richard. generous wish that we call her home our own. We treasure the house and look forward to raising our family within its loving embrace.
the greatest gift Mary gave me were the lessons she taught me about how precious our time is here, about love and family, the lessons that came with the Christmas box.